On this week's Starbase update, we have new boosters, new ships, new buildings, a fresh new round of testing, and loads and loads of rebar. Howdy Star fans, Jack Byer here with NSF, once again reporting on all of the frenetic activity that's been going on down at Starbase. This week's a little bit special because we have some aerial footage from Nick to help us better understand what's happening in Boca Chica. Okay, we have a shipload to cover, so let's get right into it. Let's start off at SpaceX's Massey test site a few miles up the road from Starbase proper. Here, SpaceX have removed the NC-31 test nose cone from the structural test stand, and now it's been put aside. It's likely to be scrapped as it was damaged during testing, but who knows, we might be in for a surprise. This is SpaceX after all. The teams have also been busy building the new booster test stand, which should be used for booster-proof testing. Once completed, this stand will hopefully be first used by Booster 10, which is currently parked at the Rocket Garden. Moving on to Starbase proper now, we see loads of activity at the propellant production site, often called the Sanchez site. Here we can see a new foundation being prepared, and it appears to be the same size as the ground fabrication building that is currently being dismantled at the production site. Beyond being a mere coincidence, SpaceX could be moving the ground fab building from the production site to the Sanchez site. Of course, the big ticket items at the Sanchez site, literally, they're very big, are the water-cooled steel plates for the orbital launch mount and the prefabricated mega bay. We can see almost two fully built mega bay sections, a third one almost completed, and even a fourth one about to begin construction. As for the water-cooled plates, two of them seem to be almost ready to go, with most of the equipment and scaffolding removed from around them, while the third one has some ways to go yet. You can see it still has a lot of equipment and scaffolding around it. Moving a little bit north to the rocket garden, we can see a new foundation being built next to Booster 10. Normally, foundation work at this location would make us think that they're about to build yet another pad for displaying or storing another vehicle, but the foundations are not the same as what we would expect for a display spot. So for now, it's a little bit hard to say what this will be for. It could be for another engine installation stand like the one Ship 26 is sitting on right now. Or maybe it's something completely different. We'll just keep watching in the next few weeks to see what happens. Speaking of Ship 26, not much has seemed to happen with it lately. Next to Ship 26, we can see some scrapped nose cone parts, likely from some of the nose cones we saw leaving Tent 3 last week. Let's move over now to the three bays at the production site where some interesting new developments have occurred. In a very strange move, this week, SpaceX has removed Ship 28's payload bay door. We don't know why SpaceX has removed Ship 28's door, and it's not the same process that we've seen happen with Ship 24 and 25, where their doors were not removed, but instead sealed over. Will there be a new door installed later? Maybe they're just going to modify the existing door. Who knows? We'll definitely keep watching, as always. Ship 28's stable mate, Ship 29, is still at the high bay after being fully stacked last week. Not much is visible, but we can presume lots of work is underway, outfitting it and getting it ready for testing, as well as installation of whatever new upgrades SpaceX is cooking up. Meanwhile, over in the mega bay, stacking of Booster 12's LOX tank has been completed, with only the engine section remaining. And crews are preparing to stack Booster 12's methane tank. From the aerial views, we can see how teams were ready to lift Booster 12's forward dome section and had already staged the next methane tank section right outside of the mega bay for stacking. We also saw the integration of the all-important methane transfer tube, which had also been staged outside for installation when Nick flew over Starbase. This week also saw loads of work on the new mega bay, where teams have appeared to complete the first level of the building. In Nick's aerial shots, we can see two of the corners of the first level already in place, while two more had been staged nearby. One of these was later installed, as seen from Nick's ground videos, and the fourth corner is now also installed as of the writing of this video. With the four sections at the Sanchez site being well underway on their build, and these four now installed, we might have more than half of the new mega bay built before the end of the month. SpaceX is definitely not wasting time here. Next up, remember all the nose cones that were moved out of Tent 3? Well, I can tell you at least where two of those are now located. Ship 30's nose cone was moved to the ring yard. This is where all of the barrel sections and rings are staged before being stacked in the bays. We expect that, after stacking Ship 28 and Ship 29, Ship 30 might be the next ship to be stacked. So moving its nose cone here is not a surprise. What is a surprise, though, is these new interesting marks on the nose cone. It's really hard to see, but if you look closely, there's a circular black structure to the center right of the leeward side of the nose cone. Is this for some kind of thruster? Will we see a similar cutout on the other side of the nose cone when Ship 30 is stacked? Or is this some sort of structural testing that we've seen SpaceX do in the past, where they cut out a little piece of a weld and examine it? 
Once again, we'll have to keep watching and we'll share as we learn more. As for the other nose cones, some have been scrapped as we saw earlier at the Sanchez site. Meanwhile, others went back to tent three, but from the ring yard side instead of the windbreak side. Well, I guess the windbreak doesn't exist anymore, but you know what I mean. The only one seen outside still is this one, which we think might be for ship 34. Speaking of boosters, if you haven't yet watched our how to build a booster, or for that matter, our how to build a starship video, do it. If you want a deeper dive on what we're looking at here, it'll be the perfect companion for you. While I'm doing booster and ship related plugs, you may have noticed that there's no sponsor in this video. That's because today's sponsor is you. That's right, check out our merch store and pick up some metal prints. It's a great way to support what we do and the photographer who made the image. They look great, they don't need a frame, and they're super easy to hang. Okay, plugs over, let's move on. Moving on from the ring yard now, let's take a look at the work being done on the Star Factory expansion. Here we can see the start of installation of beams and columns for this new part of the building, as well as the final progress dismantling the ground fabrication building. From the aerial shots, we can already see on the ground the outline of this future Star Factory expansion, and it is massive. I can't wait to see how many vehicles SpaceX is capable of producing simultaneously once all of this is fully developed. The production site will never look the same again. It's gonna look cool though, either way. Next up, let's move over to the launch site where the two big items this week were Ship 25's aborted spin prime test and all the work going on on and around the orbital launch mount to install the deluge piping and prepare it for the installation of the water-cooled steel plates. In preparation for what we expected to be Ship 25's spin prime test, we saw teams extending the flaps of the ship and performing some testing with them as well. If you missed Ship 25's spin prime test, what we saw was the startup of the methane recondenser indicating that methane loading was going to occur and hence at least some kind of engine testing was expected. Ship 25 was loaded with propellants and we were well into engine chill, but then it aborted. No test for you today, bud. We'll see if SpaceX repeats this testing this week, but this time with an actual test at the end instead of an abort. You better believe we'll be live commentating and seeing what happens once they start testing up again. As I mentioned before, we've also seen more progress on the orbital launch mount and the new deluge system. A couple of big pipes have been installed right next to the new big water tanks. We can see from the aerial shots how these are curved upward and then downward to connect the underground pipes that will head to the orbital launch mount. This shape would allow the water to fill the pipes all the way up to this point without going down to the orbital launch mount. Similar, but thankfully not quite the same as the flush pipes on your toilet. The water would therefore not go all the way to the orbital launch mount until pressure is exerted from the pressure tanks that we can see behind the water tanks. We can also see one of the manifolds for the orbital launch mount plates already staged near the pressure tanks. So we'll hopefully be seeing teams installing these and putting it all together very soon. But none of this can happen until all of the foundations are complete for the new steel plates. And let me tell you, it's Rebar Fest 2023 down there. We mentioned a couple of weeks ago how SpaceX had put sheet metal around the perimeter of the mount to protect the ground from caving in. This has allowed workers to install loads of rebar since then. This rebar will soon be covered in concrete to create a solid and stable foundation for the plates to be anchored to. We can still see some rebar left to be installed staged near the orbital tank farm berm, but we can probably expect all of this to be installed soon. So stay tuned to Starbase Live because we'll likely see a long convoy of concrete trucks arrive at the launch site very soon. It's so exciting to see this work on the orbital launch pad almost complete. It's been two months since Starship's integrated flight test, and we've gone from a smoking crater in the ground to a nearly complete foundation for the steel plates. I hope all continues well and we can see the next launch occur really soon. If the system works, we can see an amazing launch cadence after that. And looking at the production site, SpaceX will probably be ready to launch these vehicles in a very rapid succession. At this pace, we could see some human landing system tests done in the not too distant future, which would certainly be good for getting humans back to the moon before the end of the decade. But it won't just be Starship that lands humans on the moon. You can get a full rundown on both vehicles that NASA intends to land humans on the moon with in our Battle of the Lunar Landers video. And you can see if you agree with Adrian's hot takes. That video should be appearing right here. Or you can get a rundown on everything that happened this week in spaceflight on our latest episode of Twist here. All right, thanks for watching. That's it for this one. And as always, be excellent to each other.